Good morning, family, cross generation family, our friends, our Facebook friends, everybody that's connected this morning to Facebook Live on our broadcast. It is such a privilege for us to, to minister from our dining room. That's so awesome, so crazy. But it's one of those things we know and understand why. But this morning it doesn't change anything. It's you know, we are in the third day of our uh, lockdown it's the first Sunday of lockdown but one thing is for sure is that we're not locked out uh, heaven is still open and we've got access and this morning I want to really invite you into a place of much hope I want to encourage you I want to bring you to a place where you understand that this is not a bad time it's not a sad time this is actually such a beautiful beautiful time that we've received from the Lord and from the circumstances that we find ourselves in. And that is a place where we uh, can come to a place of knowing that God is who He says He is. I say we are not in a place of uncertain times. We are not in a place of lost times, nor is this a time to be fearful. I want to encourage you so much this morning there's a nice song that, that, that goes like, more or less like this. This is the time when true worshippers worship. Listen to what I'm saying. This is the time that true worshippers worship. And I believe that we are the true worshippers. And it's a time. We've got a 20 day, 21 day time period to worship the Lord and really build our relationship with Him. It's in times like these, I believe that all of us, we are exposed to an uncertainty in an area of we've never come across such times like this, not in the fact that Jesus is alive, but we haven't been in this place. We haven't been in a place where we've been locked, locked down, even for a day. And now we are 21 days locked down. But I want to encourage you as a believer, our place, the place that you have to find your refuge in, is not in man. It is not in things, but it's in the Lord, in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a beautiful scripture, and King David, he wrote it, when he said in a Psalm 144, verse 1 and 2, he says this, Blessed be the Lord. He didn't say, Blessed be God. He said, Blessed be the Lord. Why the Lord? Because the name Lord in Hebrew is the covenant name of God. I want to say this to you this morning, that God is in covenant with you. And you are in covenant with God. David says, the Lord, the covenant God, the covenant Lord is my strength. The Lord is the one who teaches my hand to war and my fingers to fight. Then he says, the Lord is my steadfast love and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield in him whom I trust and take refuge. Isn't that beautiful? David had a place to run to. He's not running to man. He's not running to, circum to things, to circumstance. No, no. He's not running from those things. He's running to God. God is his refuge. He says this in the next, in the next passage, in the next Psalm, Psalm 145. He said this. He actually used four words. He says, I will. Things that he will do in this time of isolation, in this time of lockdown, in this time of his life. And you and I, we need to do the same things in this time. He says, I will extol you, my God, O King. I will bless your name forever and ever with grateful, affectionate praise. Verse 2 says, every day with this new season, will I bless you affectionately and gratefully praise you? Yes, I will praise your name forever and ever. Verse 3, great is the Lord and highly to be praised and his greatness is so vast and deep as to be unresearchable. I want to tell you this morning, friend, I know 
where to run to. I know where to run from my circumstances to the Lord. I'm running to my Father. I personalize this. I'm running to my Father. I'm running to my Daddy. He is. He is my high tower. He is my rock, my strength. He is my steadfast love. He is my fortress. He is my deliverer. He is my and your secure place. If you would search for me in this time, and if you would search for me outside of this time, look no further. Look no further. I'll be in a secret place with my daddy. My question to you this morning is, will I also find you there? Is this also your your is he also your fortress, your strength, your secure place? This past week, and I want to share this with you, and uh, I want you to be open-minded when I say these things. This past week, we've I think we've all been exposed to um, going to town, go to, into our cities, and everywhere that you go, to the grocer, to the chain store, to church everywhere. Before entering that building, there's a person standing there at the, at the door and he's spraying your hands with a sanitizer. I've, I was lucky, somebody nearly sprayed me in the face. And I started coughing. And they was, they was just flinching like this and saying, stand back, stand back. No, no, no. You spray Maybe she thought it was doom. I don't know. But... The spraying of hands got stuck with me. And it, it took me back to a scripture in the Bible. And I want to share this this morning with you. And it's, you can find it in Psalm 24, verse 3 and 4. It says, Who shall go up into the mountain of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands. Emphasis, clean hands and a pure heart. I'm telling you there's something about this spring that uh, that the wolf people don't understand. There's something about this spring. I'm just thinking about it. I want to leave it with you. Think about it. It was a physical action towards a spiritual preparation. Think about it. A spiritual action towards a spiritual preparation. This 21 days is a great preparation time for us as believers to get connected Again, to our first love, to God, our Father, our Daddy. Friends, you've been busy. Busyness is a thief. It steals from us. It steals relationships with, from us. And it stole your relationship maybe this morning. I want to say this. Maybe it stole your relationship with God. It's time, this 21 day lockdown, it's time to build that relationship again. To get connected to your first love. And no one, no one has an excuse to say, I didn't have the time. Every one of us do have time. You've got 21 days. You've got time. Let's call it a 21 day lockdown fast. But not fast and sit there in front of the television and keep you busy with... Uh, no, no. That's good. You can do that. But spend time in the Word. Spend time refreshing your understanding. Get that revelation that changes your life. Go to that place, that intimate place with Father. Go and search how our Father's world look like. 21 days. It's God time. Now, there's another remembrance that came to me, and I want to take you also there. And this is, so, this is so precious. This is powerful, actually. And you can find the passage in Exodus 12. I don't know if you remember the time with the exodus of uh, the Israelites out of Egypt, especially uh, with the plagues that befall Egypt. 
And this special plague, this plague, the last plague, the tenth plague, the death of the firstborn of all man and beast. I can imagine what a scenario that was. I can, I don't know if I can imagine it because it was crazy times. But if you would agree with me that the plan that God gave Moses regarding the security of his people by applying the blood of Jesus on their houses, on their doorposts and lintels, that was Israel's safe place. The blood of the Lamb was the safe place. God instructed Moses saying this, Exodus 12, verse 6 and 7. I'm going to read 12 and 13 also. And in verse 6, God gave the instructions of the lamb that they must keep, and on the 14th day they must kill the lamb. And then going over into verse 7, he says, They shall take the blood and put it on the two side posts and on the lintel above the door space of the house. So they have to apply the blood on the left and the right and on the door. There was no spraying, just on the right and the left. There was an applying. Verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment, proving their helplessness. I am the Lord. Verse 13. The blood shall be a token, a sign, or a sign to you upon the doorposts of the houses where you are, that when I see the blood, I will pass over. And no plague, I say, and no plague shall be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Let me explain this. The Lord says, the blood of the lamb must be applied to the side posts of the house and onto the lintel, the top part of the door frame. When I look at this, God says, then I will pass over. I will not enter in. Your secure place is in the house. I will not go in, but I will pass over. Hear what I'm saying, friends, this morning. I'm asking the question, does it mean then that the blood hedged the people in, into a place of security? The blood of the Lamb hedged the people in into a place of security. I remember myself, I remember you, remember this. When Satan said to God, speaking about Job, and you can read it in Job 1 verse 10, he said, Satan speaks to God and says, Have you not put a hedge about him? Have you not hedged Job in? In his house, and his house, and all that he has on every side, that you not hedged Job in on every side. In other words, what, what Satan is saying to God is, if you hedge Job in on every side, I cannot get to him. Oh, so now, what it says is, it says that Satan couldn't touch Job because of the edge. God said, put the blood on the side posts and on the lintel. But that would not complete the edge. What about the bottom? We've got the side, we've got the top, and we've got the side. What about the bottom? It doesn't complete the edge. I want to tell you something. God is a mighty God. He is such an awesome God. He says in Jeremiah 29, I know what I'm doing. I've got it all planned out. I want to, I just want to take you there quickly. Verse 22. God says, and you shall take a bunch of hyssop. 
hyssop branches. And you shall dip these hyssop branches in the blood in the basin. Let me explain this. We all understand that hyssop was one of the things that the soldiers, when Jesus was crucified, when he took the hyssop branch, put the vinegar on it with a sponge, and that put it in his mouth. Hyssop signifies saving faith. It signifies saving faith. Again, God says, I want you to take a bunch of saving faith. And I want, to, I want you to dip the saving faith into the blood. But where is the basin? Some translations explains the basin as the threshold. The threshold of the door. The bottom part of the door. We've got the lintel. We've got a side post. Now we've got the threshold at the bottom. This threshold was normally filled. Every house had one. The, it was normally filled with water. So when people would walk into the house because of wearing sandals, they will wash their feet in the threshold and then walk into the house with clean feet. And now what happens is in this place, they had to slaughter the animal. You must see the picture. They slaughtered the animal in the threshold. They had the animal with them for 14 days. And now they slaughtered it in a threshold. And the Lord says, take the hyssop, put it into the basin at the bottom of the door. And put it on the side walls, on the side frame and on the lintel. And then the rest of the animal is for, for consumption. So what they did is they killed the animal in a threshold. The fresh was filled with blood and they applied the blood from within the fresh onto the side post and the lintel. And what they did is they secured the hedge. Now they are hedged in by the blood of the lamb. Verse 22, again, I want to say this. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop Dip it in the blood, in a basin, in a threshold, and touch the lintel above the door on the two sides post with the blood. Listen. And none, I'm saying again, and none of you shall go out of his house until morning. God planned it. And none of you shall go out of his house in the morning. Until you've completed the 20 day command of our president. He spoke with wisdom, our president. He spoke with authority. He spoke. And we have to adhere. You see, from this passage, we saw that in the action that the Israelites took, that it was a physical manifestation of their protection. Spiritually, we don't put the blood on our physical houses anymore. We don't go and slaughter an animal and put it on our doorpost and lintel and the blood in the threshold. No, we don't do that. We don't anoint our synagogues with blood anymore. But we anoint our temples of God with the blood. You are the temple of God. The Lord, our God, He doesn't make His habitation within a synagogue. He makes His living, His habitation, He lives in a temple. That's you and me. As a born-again believer, it was the blood hedge that saved you and me. It was the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross that redeemed you and me.
It was the blood of Jesus that restored you back unto God. Jesus is our sacrificial lamb that was killed but rose on the third day so that we can live and have life to the full till it overflows. John 10, 10. With the spring of hands, I don't see a hedge. I just see a kind of protection of clean hands. I just see two posts that's been touched. But the cross, the death of Jesus, the blood that was shed then, the resurrection, the hedge that was created by the cross for you and me as a believer, that hedge is our secure place. That hedge Jesus restored it for us on the cross. He restored it over you and me. You and me, we are hedged in. I'm saying it to you. I'm saying it to you so that you'll understand that fear does not have a place in you. Fear does not have a hold on you. Fear is not allowed. Fear is an intruder. Fear intrudes. And you... Don't open up the hedge for fear to come. The hedge, that blood was their secure place. That blood made that the death angel passes over. He passes over if he sees that the hedge that was made through the blood that was intact. No plague. No plague. What a promise. What a promise in our day. Do we have when God says, and no plague shall come upon you. God should lie or a man that will make a promise and not keep it. He promises us. That this plague family, we cannot live a loose life in God. We cannot live a loose life in God. We cannot keep on flirting with sin. We cannot stay in sin. We cannot be separated from the love of God, not into a place of intimacy with God, into a relationship with God, and think that the blood protects us, that we are hedged in. You see, if you fall in sin, and it's not this what we call everyday sin, prayerlessness, is sin. If we fall in sin, if we overstep the boundaries of the hedge, there's no more security. If you overstep the hedge, you cannot stand with one foot in the boundary and the other one outside of. You cannot have both world and God. You must decide which one. It's a choice. You must choose today. Which one is it that you're going to give more attention? You've been separated and set apart. You've been locked down. So that you have the, this time. This time that you can spend with God. This time. To restore the edge. This time. To secure. Make sure that the blood is there. Make sure. That when you speak to father. And when he speaks to you. That you hear. What he's saying. Don't give the enemy. 
when God spoke to Job in Job 1, when God spoke to Satan about Job, he said to Satan, where do you come from? And Satan said, from to and fro of walking on the earth. Why? And God said this, did you consider my servant Job? Did you look at Job? Did you focus on, focus in on Job? Yes, he said, I did. God said, what did you see? What did you see? I cannot touch him because you've hedged him in. You've hedged him in on all sides. His person, his household, you've hedged him in. I cannot touch him. Friend, this morning, I want to encourage you. When the devil, like in 1 Peter 5 says, he walks around like, like a roaring lion and he's looking who he can devour. He's looking who he can consider. I'm asking you this morning, don't you be the one that he considers. Don't you be the one that he looks at. Don't you be the one that he's trying to devour. You've got time, you've got enough time to secure this hedge. Don't overstep the hedge. If it's secure, don't overstep it. You don't have to overstep it. Stay faithful unto God. Stay faithful unto His Word. Stay faithful unto your relationship with Him. Stay faithful unto the covenant that you are in with Him. He will never break the covenant. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will not break the covenant. It's you and me that turn our back on God and walk away. And when circumstances knocks on our door, then we want to cry out. Don't overstep the boundaries. I'm going to finish in a few seconds. Keep the hedge. Keep the hedge intact. A pastor once said to me, if you live without God, you will die without God. And that got stuck in my mind. It got so much stuck in my mind. I'm looking at all the people left that died because of this virus. I look at the people that, that, that died without God. There's people this morning that's infected. They are sick. They are standing on the brink of death. They are helpless. They are hopeless. They are, name it, they are that. Where is their God? The things that they worshipped turned against them. The things that they spent the time with turned against them. None of those things is necessary no more. They need God. They need the living God. They need the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross. I think this morning, when I look into the face of, of my father, and he look around and he says, all these people are mine, but not everybody belongs to Jesus. How does his heart feel about this this morning? You and I, you and I, that's been born again, that do have time to strengthen our faith, 
to strengthen our relationship, to have this place where we can function and walk into the places that God predestined for our lives. Purpose-driven, purposeful, destined for greater things. We've got the blood, we've got the edge. There's people that don't have any. Us being silent and not speaking about these things. There's people that's dying today without Jesus. There's people that's going to hell without Jesus today. And still, some of the believers, and I'm saying with much, much brokenness in my heart, that still thinks that this relationship with Father is not that important. It's not the place to be in. There's still people that postpone this time for things. I want to encourage you this morning. Jesus is the hope. Jesus is our hope. There's none other, no other. Serving Jesus, loving Him with absolutely everything. I want to pray for you this morning, friend, family. I want to pray for you. Father, I I reach out to everyone that's watching this morning and I declare that you're a good, good God. Father, I declare that there's nobody like you. There's no one worthy of praise. There's no one worthy of exaltation. Like David, I want to declare, Father, that you are a strong place. You are a secure place. You are a fortress and we run into you. I declare this morning, Father, that you've hedged us in, in the blood of the Lamb. You've hedged us. You've secured us in a hedge. And those that's watching this morning, Father, that relationship is not in the right place. I pray, Lord, that they will come into a place where they will call unto the name of Jesus. That the hedge will be restored. That the blood will be restored. That their relationship will come to a place of being alive in God. A place of intimacy. A place that's secure. Father, I pray that everyone that's watching this broadcast, that they will consider their relationship again. That they will not postpone, but that they will embrace every moment that they have and build a strong tower under the wings of the Almighty God that they will find themselves in a secure place that they will find themselves in the hands where God promised that they will place angels there that will carry them and carry them that they will not even bump a foot Father, you've made a hedge in the blood that protects us from all these things I want to bless our family. I want to bless the viewers. In the name of Jesus, I want to say to you, God is Almighty. And He's not a man that He will lie. He will not make a promise and not keep that promise. Be safe. Use this time. Make sure that you are strong and strengthening yourself. In the name of Jesus. Be blessed family. We love you. And we'll speak again. Enjoy your day. Bye bye.